Hello everyone, Fru here. Welcome to today's presentation. In today's presentation, we're going to look at Lambda versus Kappa architecture. These are really the two main competing architectures when it comes to data processing. In this case, Lambda doesn't refer to Lambda calculus you might have heard in mathematics or Lambda school that's out there or Lambda functions or Lambda expressions or even Amazon has the Lambda. I think it's a service from Amazon. This doesn't refer to that. Lambda in this case is referring to a data processing uh, paradigm or data processing uh, architecture uh, that is common in the industry. Now, the key things uh, for the agenda today is what is the definition? What is uh, the Lambda architecture versus the Kappa architecture? What are some of the use cases as an architect or as a company looking to build your data integration uh, solution? Where does it make sense to think about maybe going down the Lambda path or maybe going down the Kappa path or even both? What are some of the nuances that you might encounter or be aware of? And then, of course, talking about the possibilities. Where can we take this from here? These are always evolving. As you can imagine, these architecture patterns are not set in stone. So these are things that are always changing before Lambda. There was something before Lambda, and we're going to talk about that, right? We have Lambda, and then Kappa is a competing architecture. Uh, who knows what the next thing would be? So it's very important that we go through all of that in the conversation. Now, this is what most people would think about when we think of the traditional uh, ETL, the traditional batch ETL. This is where, as a company, you might have uh, lots and lots of data sources, your CRM system, your ERP systems, or just data coming from vendors. Uh, data generated by your machines or uh, within your your factories so this is all data coming from the different sources on the left side and then on the right side we have the reporting uh, environment and this is where your executives your decision makers are looking to consume data to make critical uh, business decisions but how does that data get from the source to that destination and this is where the traditional batch etl that most people are familiar with comes into play so we have maybe tools like Talent and Informatica or Data Stage uh, that can connect to all the sources, uh, do some transformations, load it into a data warehouse. And from the data warehouse, you might have your Tableau report, your Power BI report, your MicroStrategy report, or just even pure Excel uh, feeding off of that data warehouse. And something like this, the, being a batch process, might run every day. Right, for companies that have gotten a little bit of certification can run this maybe every hour, all right, or some might go down to every 30 minutes. But these systems really start falling flat in its face when you start trying to make it run, say, every uh, minute or real time, because batch systems as such are not built for real time processing. These are built to run in batch, right? Every so often you go collect your batch of data and you process it downstream. It might be a batch of files, it might be a batch of uh, data reading from a table, but it's not real time. But what we know is organizations are looking to go to real time. What if your organization wants to get that data in real time or near real time, because I don't think real time really exists in, in the real sense, uh, going to near real time? What kind of architecture do you use? And that's where Lambda and Kappa really comes into play. And I'm going to bring up this article here. And the link to this will be in the description below. There are lots of articles out there, but this one really captures to us the essence. All right. So Lambda, in this case, let me zoom in here, just tells us uh, we still have the batch layer. It doesn't get rid of the batch layer. So this batch layer that we see behind the screen still exists. So we still have that. But in addition to that, it introduces a layer called the real-time layer. In some cases, this might be called the speed layer. All right, the names might change real-time, speed, or near real-time. I'm a fan of near real-time. Again, real-time, you can't really do anything in real-time. All right, so near real-time. So your sub-second kind of uh, processing of, of, of data. And then out of here, we have a serving layer. And this could now be a data warehouse. And this is where the users are consuming data from. So with Lambda architecture, we have data coming in from all the different sources. And you might separate the data sets, right, for your files and your batch. And because companies still process a lot of files that are coming in on a batchly basis. If, say, a vendor sends you a feed every day, you can't really make it real time, even if you want to, right? It's still going to have to be batch. And so that batch process doesn't disappear away from the organization. 
And so they still have this batch layer of grabbing that file as an example, doing the processing. So all this ETL still happens behind the scenes and then serving that up into a data warehouse where your analysts can go in and do uh, analytics and consume that data. But in addition to that, it introduces this real-time layer. And the real-time layer would be infrastructures like, uh, say, Kafka. You might have a Kafka uh, cluster setup, and you're writing messages to that Kafka, or you might be consuming from some APIs in your real-time, and then doing the processing using something like Spark Streaming, uh, Flink, or some of the real-time processing engines, and serving that up as well into your serving layer. And the beauty of this is now, Customers no longer, or your customers, internal customers of data, no longer have to wait for a bash to arrive for them to uh, get access to that data. And so this really reduces the speed uh, to getting access to data. You know, one of the examples I, I, I give here is I remember a while back traveling uh, from one state, from my state to a different state. And upon arriving, I did use my credit card a couple of times. And it wasn't up to just a few minutes, I got a notification and a call from my credit card company asking me about uh, my transactions being noticed in a different state. Now, that is something that would be powered by a real-time environment. An organization cannot have that kind of capability if relying on batch approach, all right? Because if, I'm, if the organization waited for a batch to come in every night, then, I mean, the best they can do is call me the next day. And that could have been way too late. And my credit card would have been in, in deep trouble by then. All right. But by having something near real time, as soon as those transactions are coming in, they can do the analytics to say, where is this transaction happening? All right. And then if they see any discrepancies, now you can action on that. And this is why uh, organizations are really looking for for the real time capability in addition to their batch processing. And this is what Lambda architecture provides for us. This is what Lambda architecture, the definition of it, this is what it provides. Now, what then is Kappa? If this is Lambda architecture, what then is the Kappa architecture? Kappa simply uh, keeps Lambda, but gets rid of the badge. And this is really motivated by, and let me go down to the uh, screenshot here. And this, really, this is really motivated by the fact that organizations are looking to go real time as much as possible. All right, the days of waiting for files to arrive before processing the files into the data warehouse that takes hours and hours to load before the business can make decisions or before people can get insights into, into whatever is going on, I really go far behind. Companies are looking to evolve into real time. All the data processing being done real time. And this is what Kappa Architecture promises to provide. So in this case, there's no more batch processing. The ETL that we see behind here is gone. So what the, the architecture here might look like might be, say, uh, Kafka or Kinesis uh, infrastructure here. Uh, messages have been written uh, to those um, topics. And you might have, say, again, Spark Streaming, or you might have Storm, or you might have Flink, uh, just reading those messages, uh, event-driven kind of processing as those uh, messages arrive. Uh, you're processing those messages and sending them downstream into your serving layer. So a decision maker doesn't have to wait for a file to arrive or wait for hours in order for them to process or to get insight into that information. And so uh, this really gives you know, organizations a, a, a totally different uh, set of capabilities and really elevating their capabilities, right? Going from batch to near real time. And you can read this article, which I'm going to leave a link into the description below, where now as we're talking about Kappa, you start seeing uh, tools like Apache Spark, right? Apache Drill for, for the processing, Spark Streaming, Apache Storm, Apache Samza, all right? That really does the processing. Kafka uh, released um, the message broker, uh, very popular for that case, all right? Kinesis is another one uh, from, uh, from Amazon, all right? Uh, Azure would have the Event Hub or they would have the IoT hub. So if you're having, say, General Motors, for example, or, or Tesla, they have all these cars, right? Those cars are having all the sensors uh, from an IoT kind of perspective. Those sensors are providing mis uh, information. That information, instead of being written to a file that waits for a nightly batch process to move that over, are directly written to, say, a Kafka uh, broker. And then you can have a bunch of consumers listening to the Kafka broker or to the Kafka topic and doing the processing to send it 
downstream. All right. And so this really gives a lot of uh, capabilities to uh, organizations. And you can see some of the tools that are being used here. If I go back into the Lambda architecture, it doesn't really specify any tools here just because your traditional ETL tool for the most part should do Lambda. All right. Because especially of the batch processing and then the streaming processing or the real time processing or the speed layer, which is what I, I really am more familiar with that speed layer. Uh, would you know leverage uh, this uh, Spark streaming and Kafka and Storm and tools like that? All right, guys. I hope this was helpful. I hope this gave uh, gave you uh, a, a good good overview of Lambda and Kappa architecture. This is something that if you're designing a data processing pipeline, sooner or later you're gonna come across. You know your boss or your manager might be asking, what kind of architecture do we have? Do we have Lambda? Do we have Kappa? Or, like, I mean, what kind of architecture do we have? And then that's where you can really start saying, all right, boss, we have currently we have, you know, we're just doing old school ETL, right? I really want us to move to Lambda architecture. All right. And then at some point when the Lambda architecture is mature enough, you can say, all right, let's get rid of the batch layer because it's time consuming, it's slow, it's inefficient, and we can all move into streaming uh, layer. Uh, to me, it's really hard to see organizations today with just pure Kappa for uh, just because, you know, there are still a lot of organizations that rely on files and, and, and payloads that come in on regular basis in batch mode. All right. So in that case, it still makes sense to, you know, go pure Lambda. That way you have your batch layer uh, and also the streaming layer for new kind of use cases and new capabilities. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. Uh, just to recap, what we've seen here is the differences between Lambda versus Kappa. We've seen the definitions of what they are. Uh, we've seen uh, some of the use cases. I think I've given some examples. Uh, when you talk about Kappa, you're thinking more about streaming and real time. So your IoT use cases, it's really going to be hard to, it's going to be hard to have a use case in the IoT space that's not Kappa, right? Because that really is more real time for IoT. But you still have your legacy processes. That could be Lambda in the case of batch processing. So those are some of the use cases. I've also talked about some of the nuances that you can see, right? You know, Lambda, of course, is great. There is a batch and the speed. Uh, Kappa is great. It's all speed. For most organizations, you kind of need both just because of the legacy infrastructure that's still in place. So if you're choosing to go just all Kappa, you know, you have to take in mind and be considerate of, you know, how your data sets are coming in. For unique organizations that are all real time and IoT and all of that, fine. But if you still have a lot of legacy processes, you know, Kappa alone might not make sense for you. In that case, you want to think about Lambda architecture and the possibilities are limitless. Who knows? These architectures are always evolving. We have Lambda, Kappa, Batch. They're always evolving. I keep my eye up on the latest and greatest. So if anything comes up, guys, I'll definitely be checking that out and making a video of it. But what I'm curious about is to get feedback from, from, from you. Have you uh, leveraged any of these architectures in your organizations? Have you had ex experiences with any of this? Any challenges? Any feedbacks? Uh, any pros and cons that you might want to think about to share guys jump into the comment section below and let us know i'll be more than happy to read and to hear what uh, everyone else is thinking thanks for watching through here i'll see you in the next video